Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the info session for the computer science and software engineering master's programs here at the University of Tartu Institute of Computer Science. My name is Henry and I will be moderating today's event. Before I give the floor to our speakers, I have some announcements for you. First of all, today's session will be recorded, so you will have the chance to rewatch the event and the presentations will be made available at the Institute of Computer Science website. Secondly, if you have some questions, then feel free, and I hope you have many questions, feel free to use the Q&A box in the Zoom window. We will answer questions after each session. Also, with us today in Zoom are Tiu and Paula, who will also answer to your questions. So don't be surprised if some questions might get answered already during the presentations. And now I would like to give the floor to Professor Dietmar Fall, who will introduce the Software Engineering Master's program. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dietmar Pfahl. Uh, I'm professor of software engineering at the Institute of Computer Science in the uh, University of Tartu. And uh, I'm also program director for the Master of Software Engineering, the International Master of Software Engineering program here. And um, so maybe let me, since we have not much time, uh, let me start with uh, motivating a little bit why the university created this degree program approximately 15 years ago. And the main reason at that time was that, uh, as maybe some of you know, um, Estonia's uh, industry strategically is driven by uh, the IT industry. So there was a need for software developers, of course, but, um, there, but also for uh, like entrepreneurs in software engineering. And we also, have not only um, a good uh, like ecosystem of homegrown software industries, but Estonia has also attracted quite many international companies who opened their, let's say, development centers in either Tallinn or Tartu. And um, that is basically the that was the, the, the original reason. But then um, you probably know that, and and my next the next speaker here in this session, um, Professor. Eero Wainiko will introduce another of our programs. We have in our institute several degree programs of, uh, on the master's level. And uh, the question is then why, if we have computer science, why do we need software engineering as well? So the reason here is mainly that uh, in software engineering, it, the master's level program is not only about learning how to program. I think anyways, we expect that our students know that already when they enter the program. It's also not only about uh, introducing new technologies, uh, software development technologies, but it's also about uh, how to help companies understand the customers, how to develop software in a way that it's cost effective, that it's an efficient development process. And uh, also to, and that is why there's also some kind of business understanding required, which is also part of our degree program. And that I think distinguishes a little bit from the more, even more technical other programs that we have in the Institute. And that's also why it's called, why we call it like a T-shaped master's degree, because it's not only technology, it's not only uh, subject matter knowledge about software development, it's also about business knowledge and combining that knowledge with business knowledge and with management uh, capacities and analytical skills. So that basically that slide that you now see is kind of illustrating this. Uh, don't don't read the detailed, uh, you know, course titles. It's more just to show that the core of the program is technical. So uh, we want to enhance uh, the knowledge that you have from your bachelor programs to to really make you um, a specialist who is able to make decisions, who is able to just to choose. Um, uh, what technologies a company should use in a certain context, depending on what sort of products they have, depending on what sort of customers they have. And um, that means also that we cannot teach all kinds of um, tools that may exist in the world. We try to teach the principles so that, that you are actually able to uh, make up your mind and to make your own decisions. And, uh, and that is why it's also complemented with several courses uh, that are teaching how to analyze problems, how to solve problems, 
how to understand the customer, how to translate customer needs into requirements, how to implement these requirements, and so on. Uh, and plus, of course, uh, the cost aspect is important. That's why software engineering is called engineering. All engineering disciplines try to solve problems under tight uh, resource and, and money constraints and time constraints. So that's where the management skills come in. That's why we also have courses like an entrepreneurship project course, business process management courses, and so on. Plus, uh, in the recent years, obviously, um, the world has taken um, by storm and using AI, artificial intelligence, and in all types of contexts. This is, of course, also true in software engineering. Um, but again, maybe different to other degree programs, uh, we try to teach or we teach students how AI can make software development better. And also the other direction, how to better engineer from the software development point of view, AI solutions. So, and, and we do this uh, in our degree program either by uh, having or, or giving the opportunity to take uh, dedicated AI machine learning courses, but we also integrate AI and machine learning techniques in the classic, let's call it classic software engineering courses. And that happens basically every year, the courses change and adopt uh, new uh, techniques and, and ways to work uh, based on AI. So now let me, after this introduction, let me explain the two main specializations that uh, are offered in this degree program, in the software engineering degree program. One is enterprise uh, software systems. The other one is embedded uh, software systems. Enterprise software systems are solutions that help companies to uh, basically run their business. Right? And that requires a lot of um, um, analysis uh, about what are the actual business needs, but also uh, requires a lot of knowledge about uh, what what technology, what database technologies, what uh, software development technologies, and so on shall be used. And uh, that is what, what we focus on in that specialization. And the other specialization is called embedded software system specialization. And embedded software systems are quite different in nature. Um, they are, uh, the, ma the main feature is that they are usually uh, combined with some device, with some technical device, like a transportation system, a car, an airplane, or a power plant, uh, or even home appliances, telecommunication equipment, etc. And that uh, raises uh, new challenges or different challenges, um, because these systems are often safety critical. So that means um, one has to better understand how to make sure that the system, in, if it's a real-time system under very tight time constraints, acts uh, correctly and also safely. And that are the two main uh, um, specializations. Let me now explain uh, briefly how our, the structure of our curriculum is. And that is now um, visible here. And you will see that uh, on the I think it's on the left side also when you look at the slide, uh, is the symbol or the logo of the University of Tartu and on the right side, the logo of Taltech that indicates that this degree program is actually a shared program. It's owned by both universities. It's, it's driven or it's, um, it's managed by the University of Tartu, but the embedded software specialization that I mentioned before is under responsibility of uh, Taltech in Tallinn. So as you can see from on this slide, the basis is the core module that is being taught in the first semester. Uh, I will show on the next slide some of the courses that are being offered there. And then after the first semester, you have to decide which of the two specializations you prefer. If you go for enterprise systems or enterprise software, you will probably the rest of your study program conduct in Tartu with the University of Tartu taking courses here. If you choose the embedded software specialization, you will from the second semester on mostly mostly take courses at Taltech. And then after the first year, hopefully core module and specialization modules have been completed. You also might already have taken some uh, pre-choice courses, some elective courses. And uh, in the second semester, you also should take one seminar. And then in the second year of the curriculum that's on the top, the blue part, 
um, of course, you have to complete all the courses that you still have to do. Uh, you will also have um, completed your practice module. And uh, of course, you have uh, done your master thesis. So the, let's, have, let's, let's have a quick look at the specialization module. Um, what you see here in blue and red uh, indicates the two universities involved. The blue is Tartu, the red is Tallinn. The core module in the first semester is uh, taught half and half, two courses in Tartu, two courses in Tallinn. We have a, an arrangement so that this is possible, physically possible, logistically possible to do. And then after that, as I said earlier, if you decided to go for embedded, then in the embedded specialization, you have a choice of five courses uh, from which you have to choose four uh, and you complete them in, in Tallinn at Taltec. If you go for the enterprise system specialization, there are in total seven different courses you can choose from, um, but you cannot choose freely. There are certain combinations that you have to take. For example, you always have to take the enterprise systems integration course um, then you can choose two from three, out of a set of three courses and another course out of a set of three courses. On top of that, um, there is a long list of elective courses in both universities, Tartu and Tallinn. Uh, I, of course, there is no point in going into this. You can look this all up uh, on our web pages. Um, um, but I, the point I want to make here is that there is actually a very big choice. So we have many. You can take in Tartu, for example, all the courses that I taught um, to master level computer science and software engineering and data science students. And at Tallinn, you have this fixed list of uh, roughly 15 different courses. Um, then there is also the opportunity to take one course that is completely free, um, but that is only half of the truth. Uh, if you're an international student, uh, you must take an Estonian language course. If you are if you are already an Estonian speaker, then language speaker, then you can really choose freely whatever you want uh, for the optional course. And to complete the picture, there will be two seminars offered. Um, it's the purpose of the seminars is to help you better understand the field of research where you do your master thesis and also to write your master thesis. And the, the practice module can be done in very many different flavors. You can do an internship in the company. You can do this internship even abroad if you want, but you can also do uh, take certain courses. You can do teaching um, as a TA. All that is integrated into this practice module. I mentioned already that you can also go abroad. So we have a so-called mobility window. Um, that's going abroad means it could be done for the internship, following certain, of course, rules and arrangements. But you can also study at another university. Um, and that is, and then again, there are certain rules that are shown on the slides. I will not go through it in detail, but that's a very attractive uh, thing to do. And I also highly recommend it. So finally, you find on our university admissions webpage, um, links uh, that explain all the degree programs uh, in full detail. Here on that slide, you see the date. So the obviously the admission has opened already, uh, but on the 15th of March is the closing date. Uh, then we will internally evaluate your applications and um, the admission results will be announced on the 15th of May. Those students who qualify uh, will be invited and then eventually the study start in September. Fees, um, I can say that uh, all, there's a certain amount of seats uh, free or tuition free for Estonian and e European Union citizens. And uh, typically all uh, Estonian students have no, have, don't have to pay tuition. For the international students, it's a bit more competitive. Uh, there only are 10 free seats and that depends on the ranking that we do one, uh, based on your application documents. Oh, and then, of course, on top of that, there is, exists the possibility to get uh, scholarships. Um, but you, usually these scholarships can be applied for once you have been admitted and you start studying at the university. So that's it from my side. Um, there are more people involved. Uh, so. If you decide to come to Tartu and study software engineering, then there are persons here, myself, then Paula Lux, and 
uh, and uh, from uh, from the administration office in in, uh, in Tartu, but also Siri Taveta from uh, Taltec in Tallinn. And uh, we have Gerd Kanter, who is the coordinator, the local coordinator in Tallinn. And we have also specialists that help you find practice um, opportunities and internships, Pele Jakovic and Donomex. That's it. Thank you very much. And I would like to hand over now to one of our former uh, students, Carolina Holter. She is, uh, well, she can say herself what she's now doing, but she was one of our top students. So please come. Hello, uh, my name is Carolina, and I just graduated the uh, Software Engineering's master's program last summer. Uh, and Detmar has given you a, a formal overview of the curriculum, but I, I'm here giving you uh, a perspective how it feels for you as a student. So the two years, the first year uh, will go uh, uh, by uh, doing the courses. So from the courses, you will acquire a really wide range of skills uh, which are needed for you uh, in the industry. Uh, either you want to be a developer or you want to be a team lead or a product uh, owner or wh whatever you want to do. There is a really a wide range of skills that you will get. And then the second year will go mostly by uh, doing the, uh, filling in the practice module and also writing your thesis. Uh, for the practice module, uh, many of my course mates went to the industry. Uh, they did their internships there. There's also a possibility to write your thesis uh, in co cooperation with the company where you're working. Uh, and many of them uh, continued to work in the industry in the company where they actually did their internships during the masters. But uh, what I did, I did my internship here in the university, uh, working in a research group. Uh, and this is a really great way if you want to get the PhD position here uh, in the University of Tartu. Uh, it's also a really good way to find your uh, supervisor for your master's thesis or your PhD uh, topic in the future. So I really recommend uh, coming here to Estonia. I ha really had fun during those two years. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. We had some questions in the Q&A section. And currently, Tiu or uh, Paula have answered most of them or are still answering. Uh, if you still want an answer from the Professor Dietmar Paar or Eero Vainiko, please let us know and definitely they will come uh, in front of the camera and answer to the questions. Until that, feel free to ask questions, whatever is up on your mind, in the Q&A section. Now, I would like to give the floor to Professor Eero Vainiko, who will introduce the Computer Science uh, Master's program. Hello. My name is Eero Vainika, and I am a professor of distributed systems here at the Institute of Computer Science, University of Tartu. And also I am program director of uh, Masters of Computer Science program. I want to introduce you a little bit about our program, also about how it is to study here in Tartu and want to encourage you to apply for the program. And I will start briefly about over overview of our master's curriculum in computer science. So it is consisting of uh, seven modules. And the first module is base uh, module or foundations module, which is 24 ECTS. And uh, then there are there is a choice of three different specialization modules. Then uh, you have master's seminar, which is worth six credits, electives module worth uh, 12 ECTS, then optional courses, which for international students means uh, studying Estonian actually, but uh, those who know Estonian can then choose something completely free from the set of university courses. Then we have practice module, which is 18 ECTS. And in the end, there is master's thesis, which can be done in two parts or everything in one go. 
Now about the foundations module, the first and most important course is algorithmics, which assumes that you have some basic knowledge about programming algorithms and data structures. And this is like a, a higher level course on these subjects. And in addition to algorithmics course, there are three other mandatory courses to everybody corresponding each to one of those specialization courses that I will be talking just in a few moments. So the first one is design and analysis of algorithms. The second one is machine learning. And uh, then the third one is distributed systems. So these courses are quite basic and very demanding. So, but uh, the, usually students take them on the first semester, uh, except distributed systems course, which is done on uh, second semester. It means on spring semester. Now about the specialization modules. The first one is cryptography and security, where you have a choice of uh, different courses where you can choose. Uh, you have to choose 24 credits in total. And uh, it is around applied cryptography, coding theory, uh, privacy preserving techniques and also uh, quantum cryptography so you can actually put together your own curriculum in that way which is your mo main interests in each of those um, specialization modules then the second specialization module is uh, distributed systems module where you can go in direction of high performance and parallel computing, or do some interesting courses in cloud computing, internet of things, or DevOps, and also go in towards intelligent transportation systems, uh, and also concurrent programming languages are there. And the third one is the specialization module is artificial intelligence, which is uh, giving you quite a long list of different courses where you have to choose then 24 credits, either in uh, natural language processing or some big data management or deep learning, machine translation or bioinformatics. So there are quite uh, good uh, choice in specialization modules and the foundation modules somehow gives you the basic knowledge so that you can actually also mix and match your particular interests from different modules and basically can then choose some courses into your elective module as well. Then there is master seminar which gives you possibilities of uh, uh, developing your writing and presentation skills and research in uh, your specific area. You have to do at least three credits uh, corresponding to your uh, thesis in the end as well. And each of those courses is uh, actually connected with some research group at our institute. And then for practice module, you have different like uh, ways how to do. Again, a lot of choices. You can do practice at an enterprise, which is uh, probably the most uh, uh, popular one here. Or you can do entrepreneurship practice, or you can also do practice through teaching or practice through research. And uh, there, you have to actually do in total of 18 credits. And, and again, you have a lot of different choices here. Then in, for electives module, you can choose any Institute of Computer Science course that is on master's level. And uh, 
there are a lot of different specialization uh, courses that uh, are given by our institute. And also uh, there is possibility for doing some studies abroad through mobility window, especially through uh, some collaborative uh, uh, universities, different uh, places you can go through Erasmus Plus program, for example. And then you have uh, the fifth module, which is about optional courses where for foreign students, you have to study also Estonian on basic a, uh, point one point one level. And uh, otherwise you can choose any other course at our Institute of from the whole university, as I said in the beginning. Now a little bit about our teaching styles and grading information. And, so we have uh, lots of homeworks actually and projects and a lot of courses are actually very much hand up, uh, hand on and uh, like uh, there are no two traditional desktop based lab courses. And all the communication is also done online. We have this courses.cs.ut.ee page where all the institute courses actually have the information and also past lecture materials and everything is there so you can choose and look what has been taught and uh, what is the feedback from the students and also we have uh, teachers are always to help you here and they are within reach of an email for a range of meeting and but we use also a lot of uh, different uh, electronic environments like Moodle, Zoom, Banotto, Zulip, MS Teams, Slack, and Discord, and some others. And yeah, so uh, each of our students actually has to have a laptop. And uh, if you don't have your own one, then you can actually borrow it from our institute for the time of the studies. <coughs> so about the grading systems, we have uh, for each course, uh, different evaluation items, but you typically this half of the course is some, some, some project or assignments, and the other one is uh, exam that uh, can be then graded with uh, A to F or pass or fail, it depends on the course. Now, uh, master thesis is 30 credits in total and you can actually do 10 of those uh, credits already during the third semester and 20 you will get after the defense but you can do them all together as well in the very end depends very much how you plan your studies whether whether you actually start your thesis earlier to do some more courses on the very last semester as well to have a look what a master's thesis means with us, there is a thesis database available that you can see what theses have been submitted and defended here. And then you will get some ideas what uh, are the requirements there as well. But there are a lot of information also online on our institute uh, webpage on these uh, matters here. Yes, there are some scholarships. Uh, in, there are those tuition waiver scholarships, 31 for Estonian and citizens of uh, EU uh, countries. And uh, for non-EU students, we have 10 scholarships that are competitive de depending on uh, the application uh, in uh, results. And then we have also some fee paying places uh, with tuition fee with uh, different options how to do it. In addition, yes, we have some scholarships for best applicants and bet later also best performance. For example, each student who gets only the best grades will after the second 
Uh, after the first semester, they will get actually achievement stipend automatically, but there are some other uh, fellowships as well. And in particular, there is industrial master's program in IT, which uh, gives possibility of doing half of the courses actually with uh, dedicated enterprises, which will uh, uh, give you possibility to write your thesis as well during practice, but some other special courses with the, the enterprise directly. Uh, yeah, there is some link on the web page. So do not hesitate to apply by 15th of March. You have to get your documents up there. And uh, for Estonian students, there is a different uh, uh, portal called size, but uh, you should then use reamapply.com uh, web page. And then you have to write the motivation letter. All the requirements are given there on the web pages. You should definitely write it yourself. And it's very important that you do it uh, in best way as you can, because this gives you half of your uh, entry grade in addition to the average grade from your previous studies. And uh, yeah, then uh, here in the final slide, there is some, some links where you can get some information. We have very modern environment here. We are uh, in a brand new Delta building with a lot of uh, good opportunities for students and studies. And uh, here are some links where you can get, uh, get some help. So thank you from my side now, yes. Thank you. And we have some questions. Some of the questions are only uh, for you and some are also for Professor Dietmar. Uh, first of all, there was a question that uh, can you give us some examples of practices taken by students? Yes. For doing the practice with uh, uh, practice with an enterprise, so like uh, you usually get partially like employed for three months at uh, some IT company, which is very common. Then uh, also practice. Yeah, this is actually the choice that most of the students actually take. take. And there is this practice uh, course that you have to pass. It's 12 credits. And uh, as I told, it's in total 18 credits. So you can then do those additional six credits again with the same uh, enterprise, or you can actually do some research uh, project, for example, uh, with some uh, our, of our groups here. And then there is uh, practice through research where you actually are uh, working together with research group on some specific problem with a specific project that is given to you with uh, our research groups. And then possibility of doing practice through teaching is mainly for Estonian speaking uh, master students who actually then teach bachelor level students with some courses, like being uh, TAs and uh, giving some lectures. And then there is this uh, entrepreneurship uh, possibility as well, where you have different courses where you can then develop some uh, startup company or like uh, join a team for brainstorming of new ideas and such different possibilities with uh, on our institute or with the Institute of Economics here. Uh -huh. Thank you. And now we have questions for the both of you. So uh, the quest first question is that uh, how, how does the study cap affect an application? I have about six years of experience in entrepreneurship, business, non-IT field after my degree in software engineering. Is it after my bachelor's? Ah, bachelor's in software engineering. Okay, so um, first of all, I should probably say that uh, I think that's true for both of the programs that um, there are certain requirements about your bachelor 
level education. But I, in, in your case, I think if you have a bachelor degree in software engineering with an accredited uh, program at some university, international university, that is the first uh, prerequisite. And whatever comes on top uh, is other things that you should mention in your motivation letter. So in particular, for example, in your case, if you have a long industry experience that will help you uh, get ranked higher. So so that's basically um, the benefit of having industry experience. Um, the actual ranking of the applicants is done based on their uh, grades in the bachelor program and on what we think are all your other competences that you explain in the motivation letter. So maybe that hopefully answers. But uh, Aaron, if you want to add something, oh, you have your microphone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, same for computer science program. That uh, important is to write your experiences in motivation letter. In motivation letter, we try to analyze how e how big is the chance that you will finish and finish in time with us. So everything that uh, is giving us more confidence about your skills and abilities will help in that direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there is a second part of this question, and I will start with uh, Eero this time. Also, uh, which of the two programs offers more study focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning? Yes, this is the uh, specialization module in computer science uh, is actually uh, focusing on artificial intelligence and machine learning, of course, is one of the uh, foundations module course already so that each of our students will get the basic knowledge but if you want to specialize in artificial intelligence and machine learning then you would probably want to choose AI specialization but uh, yeah uh, yeah so from the software engineering program point of view it's a maybe slightly similar situation. So you might remember that in the enterprise software specialization, machine learning, machine learning course is also an option. You can take it. But uh, now coming to the question that you ask can be interpreted in, um, let's say, two different ways. Uh, one way is, one, uh, is if you really want to become somebody who develops new AI, let's say, algorithms and AI approaches, then indeed, I think it would be right to go to, to pick uh, computer science and take the AI specialization in that program, because that is where the experts are that do not just apply AI, but develop new AI approaches. So now for the rest, I think the two programs uh, actually more use AI in, in different contexts. And if in the software engineering program, you would use AI approaches and you would learn about them, of course, but you will not develop new approaches. You would use these approaches not, let's say, to improve uh, in the application, to, 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 to develop new solutions in the application domain, bioinformatics or in the application domain, uh, natural language processing, but you would use um, AI in order to build tools for software engineers, better tools for software engineers, to help managers, software development managers to streamline their, develop, their, pro, their development process, but also to analyze business processes and so on. So that is what I tried to explain that AI is becoming, is kind of invading all of our courses, but in the software engineering uh, program, you will not develop new AI algorithms. Okay. Thank you. And the last question which we currently have is that, uh... Our question is that I have done a bachelor's in computer science and now I'm developing mobile and web apps with Flutter as freelancer for over uh, three years. And the question is that uh, which master's program is uh, best for him? Yeah, it very much uh, depends uh, which, uh, what, what is your main interest, whether you want to develop software or whether you are interested in all types of uh, methods and, uh, and, 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 and ways. And you should definitely look into uh, the programs and what are the subjects and what uh, might be more relevant for you in, in, in your interests. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I would have answered, I would have started, or I will start my answer exactly the same. It really depends on what you want. And maybe I, we should even mention we haven't done that so far. So in the master, the master programs, both in principle, but the software engineering master's program in particular aims at either, um, let's call it producing new uh, managers in the software industry. So if you want to become a project leader or a responsible for larger, you know, uh, um, development units uh, in, in a company then in the soft software development companies, then probably the software engineering program would be the right way to go. But then we also actually have a want would like to have some students retain some of our students to do a PhD like Carolina, uh, who, who made her statement before. And, and then again, I mean, it, it, it really depends uh, in what direction you want to do go with your research. Do you want to improve or investigate software development activities of companies and, and, and find out how to improve them and, and develop new, uh, let's say, tools for uh, also research tools for, for software development? Or do you want to improve, uh, a, uh, let's say, an English to Estonian or English to something else uh, um, uh, translation program. And then that means you need to become a researcher in the area of natural language processing and computer linguistics and so on. And then, of course, you would again go to the computer science program, just to give an example. Okay. But there was also a question that uh, can I get permission to the software engineering with my previous degree in computer science? And I believe the answer is yes. Yeah, it's uh, clear, clearly yes. If you, I, I really, uh, you should look up at the admission. Uh, there is on this web page that I mentioned the admission criteria for both computer science and software engineering. And in both programs, if you have a degree, a bachelor degree that is very close to either computer science or software engineering, then you have already surpassed that um, obstacle and you qualify. And then the rest is only about how you're ranked, how, how high you're ranked, and that depends on what else you can show uh, beyond the grades that you got in the bachelor uh, degree. And there is also a question about uh, scholarships, uh, which Paula is also answering. Uh, and let me see for a moment. Mm -hmm. There was a question that will undergraduate students who have not graduated be at uh, this advantage in selection of the scholarships. And Paul answered, uh, you must have a diploma to apply to the program. Yeah, in principle, those who do not have yet a bachelor's diploma, they apply for the program, but the scholarships will be offered upon uh, the admission anyway, if you qualify the and be a top ranked to the mm -hmm. program, then you will be considered for scholarship automatically. But uh, yes, you can apply before you have the bachelor's diploma. Mm -hmm. And now we got the new question for the bachelor's degree requirement. It says that says that could be related field. Uh, what are some other bachelors already admitted? Were they admitted because they had the programming experience? So I believe the question is that what are the other fields which uh, are okay to admit with? Who wants to go first? Yeah, it doesn't actually say in our requirements uh, which programs you can come from. You can come from whatever bachelor's program, but you have to have 24 credits at least of computer science uh, uh, computer science uh, related courses like uh, programming and uh, algorithmics and, uh, and, and data structures. Okay, so that's different in software engineering then, uh, because in software engineering, you need to have a bachelor degree either in computer science, software engineering, computer engineering, uh, or something that when we look at your degree certificate, and look at the courses you took in that uh, for that degree program. Uh, we think it actually is very close to a let's say classic uh, computer science program. So so in software engineering because it's really focusing on software development uh, practice and 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 research and uh, tools. We we expect our incoming students uh, having already a very uh, solid. Um, 
education in the in the bachelor program that that is in line with software engineering. Mm -hmm. And now currently we have answered all the questions which you have sent me. If you have any questions, uh, then one moment I have to scroll a bit here. Uh, I have uh, got it is a question about the yield score. Uh, if somebody has a better yield score, does he she have more, a better chance of getting scholarships? That's the language. Uh, no, it's, uh, Paula is answering already. Okay. But uh, in principle, uh, no, the, it is just for qualifying for so a it's program. It's a pass fail, right? It's yeah. a, if you have not enough, uh, then you will not be, uh, anyways, not qualify. And if you are above the threshold, then that's it. And the rest is not related to your score. Mm -hmm. Now we got the question that uh, can we get uh, sponsors from any company or so for supporting the degree? Okay. Well, it's a bit difficult to understand. Does it mean that uh, you have some company that pays for you the tuition fee or a scholarship? But yes, they can do that. But uh, I don't understand at the moment how the University of Tartu would be involved in that. But maybe it can be clarified. So please clarify the question a bit. And uh, until that, we go a bit forward. Is the language for Finnish related to the scholarship selection? I think this was answered that uh, the answer is no, that uh, you must uh, meet the requirements to apply. Uh, how many scholarships are there for international students in masters in science and technology? Uh, we are currently here introducing the computer science and software engineering programs and international students have the tuition fees. Uh, yeah, 10 for both. Yeah. Okay. So, but, uh, yeah. so the answer is uh, ten for both. So what's the question from non-EU uh, international students? Well, EU, EU students are also international if they're mm -hmm. not from Estonia, but but it's uh, if they if the student doesn't come from the European Union or associated sure. countries like like Switzerland and Iceland and so on, then it's ten yeah. seats of West tuition waiver. And uh, Paula is also answering this question, so soon uh, you will see uh, here. I have a BA in electronics and automation engineering. Can I apply for software engineering? Well, and that that is one of those cases where I always have to look up the uh, the actual list of programs. Uh, sorry, the list of courses that you took in your program. If if I see that all the courses are basically physics and engineering and sensor and so on then uh, it wouldn't probably suffice. But if you had a decent amount of software development courses, which where I can see uh, what you did in those courses, uh, then it might be okay. But that is one of those typical cases where I, every time from the admissions office, have to evaluate uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. And to clarify, the previous question was the to Jason waivers uh, for non-EU students, and yeah, the answer is both uh, then for the each programs. I believe we now have answered all the questions, not yet. Uh, I took a course in C program in my bachelor's, and I also work as a system administration in a company. Uh, what should I do extra in order in order to be eligible in a program? It depends on what is the bachelor degree. Well, I mean, for I don't know, Edo, maybe for you it's more yes. open. Yeah, if, uh, if you have uh, enough credits uh, in, uh, in uh, algorithms and data structures, programming, as I expect, if you have taken C course, and, and some others so that it will be in total at least 24 credits related to computer science, then it is, uh, then, then the requirements are fulfilled, yes. 
So yeah, if it's electric and electronic engineering again, it's like the previous uh, question that I answered. It it could it could be uh, sufficient if in your university in that degree program you actually have a certain relevant amount of uh, software development related courses. And just to give examples, so it would be of course programming courses like C programming. Uh, but typically, you also should have taken a database course in that program. You should have taken what what uh, Ero said, uh, um, something about uh, data structures. Uh, a software a project management course, so for software project management would be helpful. But uh, actually, we look more at the technical course. Like if you even have something about software design, software architecture, that that is uh, what we look for in the bachelor programs to be to qualify for the software engineering degree. So there are some more questions that should I upload my course description? So the question is that when you're applying and you want to make sure that your course is uh, sufficient, should you like in the motivation letter link to the courses you have taken or what are other good examples to clarify this question? Yeah, so uh, if... Uh there is some specifics with the course like uh, that uh, you really want to uh, specify your skills then you can of course put some link for example to the course uh, syllabus in your university for example to clarify but uh, yeah usually uh, for known universities we know actually what are the syllabus typically about so. Yeah, I think there might still be a slight misunderstanding that one step is, at least in the software engineering admission, does your bachelor degree, is it technical and is it software related to some minimum degree? And then, then you would automatically qualify. So if it is only closed, then you have to look at this 24 ECTS qualification that also is applying for computer science, where we also list some example courses so that you understand in what direction we, we look. It's, it really, you have to understand a little bit about design of software, a little bit of, of course, programming languages, the more the better, uh, and architecture, but also uh, data structures, databases, etc. So, and if you are now talking about that, you want to explain the additional, how, what these 24 ECTS courses are really about. Uh, again, I think it has to, it sh you should upload it in your application documents already. So that uh, if that is necessary for us to understand whether you qualify at all, right? But if you then, in order, if you qualify and then want to be ranked higher and you think these courses give you a particular additional edge over the other the uh, applicants. Well, then, of course, you should also mention it in the letter. But I think there it's more important for us to see, can you actually explain concisely, precisely what you did so that we understand it and we also understand the value? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the questions uh, keep coming on. There is one question about the Yelts test. I hope Paula or you can answer it. Uh, how much? Mm -hmm. So at our institute webpage, you can find all the information about the requirements for applying each program. Also, you can see all the subjects which each program has. And here, there you can also find the requirements for the motivation letter and the language test. So definitely, I recommend checking them up. And if you have questions, always feel free to write them to us. But there's a question that is there a chance to get admitted to both of the programs? Is this something which uh, many times happens or not? So too often students have the hard choice of choosing between two good programs. Well, maybe I go first, but I think I would probably give exactly the same answers that I, that I will give. If you are a really good student and you apply to both programs, you will probably be invited to both programs and then you have to <laughs> decide. Yeah, but... Yes, definitely you have to mm -hmm. choose then which one to go with. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one question, which uh, sadly is the last one. 
the motivation letter is a very important part of the application process. What are your recommendations? What to write there and what are the mistakes which many applicants do? I will give the first uh, word to Eero. Yeah, just a, a small note about motivation letters that they are actually checked for plagiarism. The worst thing is to write some parts into your letter of somebody somebody else's uh, motivation letter, and then you will get into uh, lower grade or getting uh, disqualified. But uh, of course, you should write something about yourself and it's very important uh, you actually show your motivation why you want to study and then what are your skills that's content wise but form wise i would like to add that please do not uh, tell us uh, that when you were five years old you already uh, dreamt uh, to become a software engineer and all your life uh, you were working towards no we are really more interested in facts uh, so, and of course, you don't have to start a uh, very long time ago. Tell us what is your starting point, your bachelor degree, or your what you're work if you're working, what you're working. Why are you interested in this program? What are your competences, your skills? What what do you hope to gain from when you have finished the program? Uh, and try to be concise and precise, and don't plagiarize. <laughs> Thank you. And there was one question that do we have an admission test? No, all programs don't have an admission test. So it's all about your previous studies and the motivational letter. So I thank both of you for coming today and speaking about the programs. From my side, I would like to recommend that uh, don't start your applications too late. The application deadline is already 15th of March. So if you are keen to study here at the University of Tartu, I would recommend starting the process now. Also, if you still have any questions, don't worry, visit our website. You can always write directly to the program directors or to our uh, academic affairs office. So I hope to see all of you uh, next year, not over Zoom, but already here in Tartu. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.